Hi everyone, uh, my name is Maria Spinetti. I am one of the graduate assistants at the Student Academic Resource Center, and today you will be hearing about me. Uh, and I'll be directing the under pressure managing test anxiety, so hopefully you're all here for that. Uh, thank you for being here. And uh, so you know, the session is going to be recorded, the workshop will be recorded, so that's why I will be staying here in this spot, even though it's gonna be a little bit awkward for me to talk from here. So um, it is because we're being recorded, we're live streaming it, and then it will be posted on YouTube, so if afterwards you want to go over, there's something that maybe you missed or something you want to go over, maybe you have to leave early, uh, then you're welcome to do that. Um, if you do have a class after this or you have something and you need to leave early, I ask that you do quietly, that you fill out the um, service that we put in your tables so that uh, we can get your feedback about these workshops and what we should do differently in the future. But if at any point I'm talking and you have any questions, you need any clarifications, please raise your hand and I'll be happy to clarify anything, any concerns or questions that you have. And then if, um, what was I going to say? I forgot. But yeah, so my name is Maria Spinetti. As I said, I'm one of the graduate assistants for the Supplemental Instruction Program for the Student Academic Resource Center, or SARC. You probably already know what SARC is because you're all here, but I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Uh, we'll be participating, so I'll be, be, I will be asking you a lot of questions. The more you participate, the faster this will go, So, and I'm not scared of silence. So I will just stare at you for a long time. I'm a teacher and early childhood education uh, undergrad, so I can wait. Um, and then for those of you who know about Linklude, uh, you can get points through the Goose Chase app. So if you do have it, please go ahead and um, complete the steps to get the points. If you don't know what it is, it is a, a program that we have here at UCF for freshman students and transfer students. You can get points going to certain events and then you accumulate those points and at the end of the semester you will enter to participate into a raffle. Um, and then you can get those points through the Goose Chase app. If you have any questions about that after, at the end, we can, you can reach to either Jessica or me and we can help you out with that. Uh, before we keep talking all about this, I know we have a lot of people, but I just want us to introduce ourselves just quickly, just to know your names, because again, you'll all be speaking up. Um, so I'm gonna start first. My name is, as I told you, Maria Spinetti. I'm one of the graduate assistants at the Student Academic Research Center for the Supplemental Instruction Program. And I am, I under, my undergrad was here at UCF in early childhood development and education. And now I'm doing my grad, my master's program in the same things, so early childhood development and education. So I'm going to start with this table, and who wants to go first? I'll go. Sure. Hey guys, my name's Gabby Owens, and I'm majoring in sports and exercise science. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jessica Ramirez. I'm majoring in sports science. I'm Maxwell, I'm majoring in aerospace engineering. I'm Orlando, and I'm uh, majoring in event management. Yeah, I'm Alexa, and I'm a psychology major. I'm majoring in communication science. So we'll go with this table in the middle. I'm Bree. I'm a bio major. I'm Emily. I'm a psych major. I'm Jordan. I'm a psych major. I'm Ashley. I'm a biology major. I'm Safa. I'm a biology major. I'm Kevin. I'm a CS major. Awesome. We're going that way now. Um, I'm Shamaya. I'm a entertainment management major. Nice. I'm Khadija. I'm a chemistry major. Awesome, and now we're going to the back table. I'm Nathan, I'm a computer science major. I'm a mind, I'm a computer science major. I'm Kristen, I'm an electrical engineer. I'm Awesome, and then we'll go with our final table. Hi, my name is Jesse. I am the, uh, basically the IT guy for SARC, um, and my major is computer science with a minor in stats. Awesome. And now we're missing you only. Um, just your name and your major. My name is Shannon. Uh, my major is biochemistry. Awesome. So we have actually a lot of biochem people, a lot of phys um, physics, a lot of psychology people, a lot of um, computers, so, and some other majors, so that's great. 
Um, I think it's very beneficial when we are talking about the test taking and all these things to actually get input from everybody because um, if you're a chemistry person, probably your exams are a little bit different than the exams that I took when I was an early childhood education major. So it's really good to have those conversations and start to learn a little bit more about um, those tests, tests in different areas. So before we jumped into test taking and all that, I just want to tell you a little bit more about SARC services. You are here, so you already know about the workshops that we offer, but we do offer a few more. So raise your hand if you know about tutoring from SARC. Does anyone know about tutoring? Great. What about SI or supplemental instruction? Does anyone know? Great. Does anyone know about coaching? Great, so we'll talk a little bit more about those. So basically, peer tutoring is just regular tutoring that we offer in the SARC um, lab. So if you want to learn about the schedule, you can go online to our website or Google SARC UCF and you'll get the full schedule of all the classes that we're offering this semester. And then you'll get to see the times that tutoring is being offered for those classes and you can just go to our SARC lab and that's in a walking basis. You don't have to make any appointments or anything like that. Then we also have supplemental instruction. So if you are in a class that's offering SI, then you'll probably have heard already an announcement being made in your class from your SI leader. Your SI leader also sits in class. And then that person hosts about four sessions throughout the week in which you can go with any questions that you have related to the course and that are very specific to your instructor. So you just bring your questions and you go over that. You can also find our schedule online on the SARC website. And you should have access, you might have seen it, on uh, web courses, there's a separate course if you are enrolled in, an S in a class that's offering SI and you'll get announcements there from your SI leader as well. You might have had them already so you, I'll just encourage you all to check it out and see if you do have them. Then we have coaching so if you feel like you leave the workshop and you still need that extra help to study properly for an exam, to learn time management skills, then coaching is a great opportunity for you to meet with, uh, to meet one on one with one of our coaches. They are students who do really well in all the academic areas, so they will be able to help you create a schedule, or maybe it's determine better ways to study. Maybe you have, you're taking hours and hours to read a textbook. They could help you find strategies to improve that, and they can also hold you accountable throughout the semester because you can meet with them as often as you would like to. We do offer more academic success workshops, so if you feel like this really helped you and you want to learn about different topics, then you can also find our schedule online on the SARC website and learn about all those other workshops that we'll be offering throughout the semester because we tend to target, we always target topics that we know everybody struggles with, so like procrastination, time management, all those things are things we talk about because we know those are hard to like narrow down when you're in college. And then we also have some online support if you're going on our website, such as Opal. So SI in the online format, some classes offer that. And then we have some other resources like the handouts that you have in front of you. We have a full list of handouts for a variety of topics on our website that you can find. Um, so if you're struggling with something else or you want to learn a little bit more about any of the other topics that we offer, then you can just go ahead and find anything there and kind of like get a better glimpse of uh, what strategies you could implement. And then uh, the other service that's not listed here, but we, do are, we are offering one-on-one -on -one peer tutoring. Uh, so you could also find that schedule on our, word, on our website. And that's a new service that we're starting to offer this semester. We kind of like piloted during summer, and now we're really going with more classes. So anybody has any questions about SARG, what we offer, anything like that? Um, we are actually located in Trevor Colburn Hall, so that nice new building in um, room 117, and that's our start lab. If you ever need a place to study, the library is too crowded, or you're just walking and you stumbled upon that building, you can, you're can. you welcome to come into our lab, and we have like um, whiteboard tables that you can use, so that's really fun. Like I know if you're taking chemistry, you need to draw a lot, um, and I don't know why for me it's easier to draw on, on whiteboard, so you can go ahead and do that. Now, let's get into what we're here to talk about. So anxiety, who here can talk a little bit more about what anxiety is? It can be just general anxiety, test anxiety, whatever you feel like you could talk about. Yes, Jessica. I feel like it can be a sense where you're like overwhelmed from the amount of stuff you have to do or just like anything in general that's going on in your life and you feel like you're not going to be able to handle has anybody seen that meme with the dog and everything's on fire? Yeah. Whoever has related to that, like constantly, like every day I feel like that's me, no. But um, 
I feel like that's a lot when you have all these things going on. You're probably working, taking classes, um, being involved. Maybe now it's, who here is a freshman? What about living on your own? Having to do your laundry, having to clean your dorm, living with roommates, managing living with roommates. Like all those things sometimes can be overwhelming. And it usually happens that you have all that in the same week that you have three tests. I don't know why, but it's like everything is just that moment and you just feel so overwhelmed and you're so anxious about everything that's going on. And I think for me, a lot of what anxiety is, is the fear of what's going to happen. Like what if, yeah, I have a test and then this happens and then uh, I fall, walk into the library and then I'm in the hospital, something like that. Like everything, the terrible, every terrible thing that could happen, I just think about it and that makes me even more anxious. Um, so I really like that meme. What if this happens? Like the anxiety is telling you, what if this happens? And you're like, but it just won't. And then, but what if it does? And that's when you, like, it just, those thoughts keep, keep crippling on you. And then you're like just so overwhelmed with everything um, that you feel like you don't have control of anything, which I think it's also where anxiety comes from. Not feeling like you're in control of what's going to happen, the unknown, because you can study for a test, but then you're like, well, what if the professor asks? that specific question that I have no clue about. I studied like all the previous 100 pages, but there was this one thing that I just didn't learn because I couldn't. Um, so how to know when you're anxious? Some of the things are you are holding your breath or quickly breathing. So this is when we get to more extreme levels of anxiety. You, are, um, you have a, an awareness of everything that's going around you. So maybe you're trying to study, but you sit down and you just cannot concentrate because you're looking at the person that's walking with, a, with Starbucks next to you and that person who's just watching Netflix on class next to you. All these th things that normally you would be okay with, but when you're so anxious, you cannot focus on those. Also, sometimes your muscles will tense. Uh, you will have racing thoughts. Sometimes when you go to sleep, you're not able to fall asleep because you're thinking about all these things that you have to do tomorrow or all these scenarios of things that could happen and you're like, yeah, tomorrow all of this could happen and I, I don't know what, like you can't just go to sleep at that point. Also having a rapid heart rate. Um, you could see having nausea, cold or sweaty palms. Um, sometimes when you're about to take the test, like I think a lot of them just come together and you're just freaking out and you're like, really worried about everything and everything you could have done and everything that you didn't do and how much you didn't study. Um, so all those thoughts paired with, I'm getting my test right now and there's nothing else I can do. So I want to differentiate between two forms of anxiety. One is everyday anxiety and then the other one is an anxiety disorder. So everyday anxiety is, you know, worrying about breakup or paying your bills. Maybe, you know, you've maxed out your credit card once again and you're like, how am I going to pay that if I'm not even working? Or you're feeling self-conscious in large groups. You don't feel like maybe going to a specific party because some people will be there. Or maybe you're nervous before an exam or a presentation. Who here gets nervous about public speaking? Some of you, well, yeah. Um, so that is normal like some level of it is what you would see every single day because that helps you that it's part of if you're not anxious you're not going to take action like if you're just like that's whatever like i don't care about the test i don't care about that presentation then you will you won't do anything you will just stay watching netflix in your dorm and just don't even care about it so we do want you to be or we want to be a little bit anxious to the point that it is like a, a productive anxiety in which you are Moving along, you're seeing this is an issue, I have to solve it. What, am I, what steps am I going to take to make sure that this is um, solved? But then we also have anxiety disorder, which is just a little bit different. That's a constant unwarranted worry that affects every day. It's avoiding situations because of that fear, um, to having panic attacks, uh, the thought of taking an exam, or the thought of having a presentation. If you're someone who throws up, I hope you're not, but if you're someone who throws up when you're about to have a presentation or an exam or you just cannot even hold food before doing something, then at that point it's a little bit different and that needs to be treated differently than everyday anxiety. And with those distinctions, I do want to look into what is different from test anxiety. So you're all here because to some extent you're like, okay, I might have some test anxiety. I might need to figure out how to study. So tell me, you all, what are some things that you feel 
um, that could be test anxiety. Is it right before a test? Yeah. Okay. Like freaking out, like, ooh, this is real. Awesome. What else? Overthinking questions. Yes. And spending way too long in those. That happens to me a lot. Thank you. What else? Yes. Sometimes when I read the first question and I don't know it, I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to know the rest of this test. And yeah. Like that meme about when they give you the test and then they ask you to write the date and you're like, oh, I already don't know that one. Yeah. yeah. What else? Yes. Thinking about other stuff Sorry, about what? Thinking about like other things. Yeah, you're thinking about everything else and then you can't just focus on the test. Yeah, when sometimes it happens that you have anxiety for other things and then you go to take the test and then your thoughts are racing for other things. Great. One more thing. Does anybody get anxious about studying for a test? Yes. Uh, I don't want to share. I was just oh, okay, you get anxious. Okay, sorry. Um, so I'll, for me, it's a lot of procrastination. And it's not procrastination because um, I feel like watching TV. It's because I get anxious about studying because I get anxious about the grade that I'm going to get. So if the content is very, very difficult, I'll be like, yeah, I don't want to study it, which is totally not smart. You're like, if the content is difficult, you want to study more. But the thought of having to learn all this and having to go through it, that just makes me so anxious. And I'm like, I'm just going to push it and wait until later. I'll do, I'll do all these other things that are like, I'll clean my house. I'll do you know, this assignment that's due in a month. Everything but studying for the test, because I really get anxious about um, taking the test. It's the thought of taking the test of what grade am I going to get. Um, so. With test anxiety, there are different things that play a role into it. But the main thing is that in order to decrease test anxiety, and you will see it in the handout, everything that I'm talking about is pretty much in the handout that I gave you that's stapled. That's all the information that we will be talking about. This is, of course, in a concise way, but I just wanted um, you to have it. But um, the major thing to combat test anxiety is to know the material. If you're prepared, if you have been studying consistently, then your test anxiety will decrease. And we'll talk more about how getting prepared is important, how to actually get prepared, and then we'll also talk about, well, I've been prepared, but I'm still struggling. So that's a little bit about how um, our conversation is going to move along. But there is a difference in thinking you know the material and knowing you know it. So there's, a different, there's usually a lack of understanding with the material of, oh, I kind of know it. But then if they ask you more follow-up questions, you'll just be like, yeah, no, I don't know it to that extent. There's also a lack of preparation, again, that comes into play when we talk about test anxiety. Um, of course, you're going to be anxious if you study for an hour the night before. Um, that's not going to cut it. If you're taking like a biochemistry exam, you'll be freaking out at that point. Um, procrastination, of course. If you, For me, it happens a lot that when I procrastinate, I sit down and I'm going to take the test, and it's like, well, I could have studied all these hours, but I was just watching Netflix, so I can't remember everything about that next week, um, about that show's episode, but I just can't remember what I was supposed to be studying at that point. So, of course, procrastination plays a role. Having an effective study skills, and this is something that we'll talk a little bit more about, but the way that you study is important. If you are someone who learns from reciting information, but you just don't even go to class and don't listen to their information, then your study skills are not being as effectively used as they could. And then also not being able to concentrate, and we'll talk um, more about that. And then I think for me this is the biggest thing, that pressure of the grade percentage. Like, I was that person who would calculate what was the highest grade I had to get or the lowest grade I had to get to get this grade in my final class. So having that pressure of what grade am I going to get but also understanding, and that's the caveat, like you have to understand that this is not the end of the world. If you fail the test, which is not what I want at all, but if you do fail it, that's not going to be like a life or death difference. So we'll talk more about that. But as I said, as knowledge and understanding increases, test anxiety, and I can talk, test anxiety should decrease. And then to combat anxiety, these are the things that we need to look into. 
We have to look into motivation, time management, good study habits, and self-discipline. Those will be the keys to making sure that you get prepared to the test, and then when you are in the test, you have also the skills or resources or tools to make sure that it goes well. So first off, motivation. We all have those self-defeating behaviors in college, such as, per such as procrastination. And it may be caused by you don't have a fixed schedule for studying each day. You don't always read the textbook. You procrastinate on, on assignments. And there's also a lot of self-sabotage. We can be our own enemies sometimes. So uh, a lot of it is stemming from I have all these things in life. I have friends. I have class. I have my love life. I have work, family, homework, sleep food, holidays, and within all that, I just have to survive as a human. And then you're like, I just don't have enough time. Life is too overwhelming, I'm too busy, I can't take care of that. But the truth is that there actually is time for you to do everything that you need. Um, so this is something that the first time I saw it, I was shocked. And it's the fact that we have 168 hours in one week. Of those, 15 hours are in class. Some of you are taking 12 credits, so that will be 12. Some of you are taking online classes, so you might not have to be in a face-to-face -face class, but you still need to put in that time. Um, who here sleeps eight hours at night? Okay, just one person. I sleep eight hours at night, so that number might be even lower. If it's greater, like that's great, but some of you might not even spend 58, 56 hours every week sleeping, and then 25, 21 hours eating. I have breakfast on the go, I have breakfast on the go, I have lunch on the go, and then for dinner, usually also on the go. So not even 21 hours. So you might put it down to like one hour, but let's say you're gonna take the time, and that includes your, like, your morning routine, getting ready and all that. You're still having 76 hours that can be used for anything. Let's take out 20 hours of working. Some of you are working, some of you are working more than that, some of you are working less than that. And then let's take out 25 hours of relaxing, socializing. So that's a full day. That's more than a day for you to go out, hang out with people, have do whatever you want with those 25 hours. And that's not counting sleeping. That still leaves you with 31 hours of studying. Who here spends 31 hours studying every week? Yeah. It's crazy. Even finding 10 hours a week, sometimes it's like, what am I going to do? How am I going to find that? So the first, as I told you, the first step of making sure you're getting ready for tests, for taking a test, is to managing your time, making sure you have time for, to study. That's why you all have a schedule with you that um, I want us right now to create a rough draft of your schedule, put in your class times, if you exercise, put that in. If you do take your three hours of eating, put it in. It might look overwhelming, but don't get scared because those are things you're already doing. It's just putting it in paper. And this might be what yours looks like. And I'll be coming around and helping you out if you have any questions. Does anyone need a pencil? You're not prepared. <laughs> Is it one pencil? Yeah, because that's the last oh. sort one left. <laughs> Do you want a pencil or a pen? No, no, no. Okay, that's two things.
one we're taking to know when you're in office. This is the one we're gonna take to know when you're in office. Just kidding. <laughs> Okay, if you already have your class schedule in it, I encourage you to put in some study time. Now, when I think about study time, I take a few considerations. I don't do studying on Fridays, because I'm not productive on Fridays, but I already know that. I do study on Sundays, though. Some people don't like to study on Sundays. I can use all day Sunday to study. So put in a few hours where you would know that that's when you're the most productive. If you know that right after class you're extremely tired and you're not about to sit down and study some more because you've had classes back to back, don't put it there. Be realistic about the times where you think you're more likely to study. If you take naps in the afternoon because you have more classes at 7.30, don't say you're going to study when you're going to actually be taking a nap. Maybe you're a night owl and like to study about at 9 p.m. That's fine. Be realistic about the times where you would actually be more likely to sit down and study. You don't have to put in 31 hours. Just see what do you think is like the normal time of studying you spend every day or every week. <coughs> Also, if you have a commute, make sure you add it there. Like, I have to take an hour of my day to make sure I'm on time here. So make sure you take that into account. Maybe you foot prep every Sunday and you want to write that down. Or you foot prep more than, meal prep more than one time a week. You go to the gym. You go to a specific class at the RWC. Whatever are those things you keep consistent throughout you, your week that make you more like a functioning human being, make sure you add those to your schedule. If you're in a RSO, like if you're part of an organization and they already have meetings every single week, make sure you add those. If you want to start volunteering, you could also add that in your schedule. I'm going to give you about two more minutes to wrap up um, and then we can continue with adding things to it. And you're like, what? More adding? So you need to set your schedule right now. That's what you're gonna do. You see that? He doesn't even want to do it. Well, I'm calling the point. I can either wake up early or just cram in three days. <laughs> cram in three That's days. That's not right? the. No. That's exactly what we're going to talk about that you shouldn't do. I hope you leave this workshop learning something. That's why we have Jesse come to every workshop, because he still needs to learn his study skills. Okay, so I'm going to keep going, but feel free to add more things to it now as we go or um, even afterwards. And the reason why we're doing it right now in a piece of paper is because it's really helpful to first see it this way, but I encourage you to use, I have to go back so that they can see me. I encourage you all to use whatever system you would rather use. I see that some of you brought, brought 
brought in your planners. So you're welcome to include it in your planner. I personally really like uh, using my calendar on my computer. And then that's, that syncs with all of my devices. So that way I have it set for you have class every single week at the same time, so you can just set it so that it's um, consistent and you don't have to set it every single week. Or if you like more having a pay, pay per version, you can create one of those. You could even just laminate, lam, where are words? laminate it and then you could use like post it notes so that every week you can change when you're studying or what you're studying. And uh, we'll get more into it in just a second. But moving away from you have a schedule. The first thing about a schedule is you have to actually use it because it looks wonderful in paper. Like if you write it down, it looks like you're a super productive person, a person that goes to the gym, a person that studies, that eats at regular times, that actually preps food. Um, so you do have the time to do all that. Now it's a matter of actually having that self-discipline to get to it and actually doing it. So if you look at this schedule, we have different things like that person has work, that person has studying, that person has sleep. It looks very crowded and you might not like it. I personally find it that if I look at my schedule and it's very crowded, I have to be productive because there's no time for procrastination. So it's also a matter of finding what works best for you and then sticking to it. The first week, you might struggle a lot, but as time progresses and you keep on using it, it will get better, I promise. So. Leaving, we'll come back to the schedule, but I want you all to flip the page, um, flip that schedule, and then choose one of your classes. Maybe it's that class that you're really, really struggling with. That class that made you come to this workshop. Write how you study for it. What are some things you do to study for that class? And I won't give you any hints, because I want to see what you all can come up with. This is on the back of the schedule? Yes, on the back of the schedule. Or if you have another piece of paper, you can use that. Okay, so I see that some of you are done. Well, those of you continue to work on that, uh, I want you all to share a little bit about what are some ways you're going, you study for those classes. Yes? Um, I take anatomy, and for that class, I, well, my professor gives us a study guide, so I send it to a quizlet, and then I also like to see videos, because I'm a visual learner, and then I go to all the TA sessions for the library. Great. Great. Do you go to class? Yeah. That's a way of studying, too. So you might have not thought about it. Um, going to class is actually something you can incorporate. Those are all great ways you mentioned. But even things, simple things like going to class, because if you're not going to class, then you're going to have to take that extra time somewhere throughout your day to include it, to study all those things that the professor went over in class. Also, you mentioned going to TA hours or professor hours, office hours. That's also great. Um, opportunity for you to get more familiarized with the material in a smaller setting so that if you struggle with big lectures or you need that extra one-on-one -on -one support or a small group support, you can go through those. What else? What are some other ways people study? Yes. Yes. So if you're taking any like the math classes, physics classes that they have a lot of problems, practice problems are the best thing I would say. Um, yes. Yes, and that's a great st strategy because when you're creating your own notes, those notes should serve you as a study guide. Um, if you're incorporating both the textbook notes and your class notes, then um, it's easier when it comes down to the test to have all your notes in just one place, make sure that they are organized, and you don't have to take the extra time. But at the same time, you're reviewing concepts, and 
going about textbooks are there are different ways you can read it before going to class and then get clarification during class there's also the, the um, some professors allow you to read the textbook after you go to class and either way it has its benefits so when you do it that way you're connecting things you learn in class to concepts that you're reading in the textbook that if you hadn't been to class then it would have been hard to catch on those anybody else yes Jesse I make a cheat sheet Hear me out. Okay. <laughs> Explain yourself. It's not to you. It's more of like to have it with me, not to have it out during a test, but to have something there that's like, it makes me feel better as like, if it's there, I need it, but it's not like you need it. It's not like you're going to look at it. It's like it's there. And also, it's like, if you can put everything on a one or two yeah. sheets of paper, you're going to know what's going to be on the test and exactly how that's going to be. But, but it's not really to like, Cheat on during a test. Like I want to emphasize, like Shark is not telling you to cheat. Yeah. Like that doesn't work like that. I That's do. I do. I do like that. Um, I do it with formulas. Mm -hmm. When I was taking like physics classes, um, I would just have all the formulas in one sheet, and if I was able to create that uh, cheat sheet without looking at the formula sheet that I had prior to that, then I knew I knew them all. And then when I got my test, what I would do is from memory just write as much as I could. And then, in my case, that's how I was able to work through different problems. So I think as, as long as you don't cheat, I think that's a great strategy. It's a sheet. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like a, it's kind of like a review guide that you have for yourself. Yeah. Jessica. So lately, I've been having a lot of classes where I have to read a lot, and I'm not used to that at all. But what I've been doing lately, and I find that it's really helping, is so I look at how long like a chapter is. So the past chapter I had to read is like 19 pages. And I know I'm not going to want to sit down and read all 19 pages because it's like very dry material. So I know I'm going to want to split it up. So I said, OK, I have four days to read this. I'm going to read five pages a day. So that really helps like in terms of like if you want to like sit and take notes while you're reading, then that's only five pages you're doing as long as you're just making sure you're doing it every day. Like it's not that much at all. Like I can read five pages in like 20 to 30 minutes. So then that's like breaking it down into chunks and make it like less daunting than if I had to like sit down and read it all in like three hours. So that's what I've been doing that this semester and it's really helped me so far. So. Yeah, and I think if you have that one class that you're like, I'm taking this because I have to, not because I want to at all. And you know, that's like the hard class, the one that you're like really struggling with in a semester. It's really good to kind of not mask, but put things around it that you like a little bit better from different classes so that when it comes down to doing it, you're already in a productive mood. You can just get rid of it, get done with it, and then continue to doing other things. Um, but if there's one thing that from what everybody has said is that everybody studies differently and studying doesn't have to take place just the wood cramming night before the exam, which I'm really not encouraging, but it takes weeks um, it can take place weeks before the exam, so it's not just the day before, it's not just um, studying for a test, but it's also going to class, going to TA hours, go doing homework. If you do, some professors have optional homework, if you're doing that, then that's actually studying, and that's really important. And then there's a difference in gathering information and learning the material. And I think this is where a lot of us struggle with, at least that was my case, struggling in to, from I went to class, I went to lecture, and I'm reading this material, I'm understanding it, but I'm not learning it. I cannot apply it. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And again, reading has different forms. It's, uh, studying has different forms. It's reading, it's taking notes, reading notes, mnemonic devices, mind maps, outlines, study guides, practice problems, all that. If you're taking like a psychology class, I used to love mind maps for that because it helps me see information in a more visual way and understanding how some things are connected to each other. So I'm going to make a distinction between studying for understanding and then studying for check for learning. Because I think the second one, both are really important, but the second one is going to help you a little bit more when it comes to test anxiety. So studying for understanding, it's again going to class, reading your textbook, going to office hours, making a study plan, making sure you're actually covering the material, reading it, and that you're doing your practice problems. That is very important. That's what we're all used to. But, and that's, again, we want to include that in our forms of studying. But then there's a difference to, from studying to check for learning. Self-testing is incredibly important. 
when you're studying, if you're reading a textbook and you have your formula sheet and then you're um, trying to solve a problem, you will be able to do it at home. If you have that formula sheet, if you have those hints that some programs give you, but are you really learning all that? Will you be able to go ahead and then apply it when you're in the test? Probably not. So the first part is doing those problems with those resources, but then at some point you have to transition from that into self-testing. It might be I'm going to do 10 problems, like the last 10 chapters, problems from the chapter. I'm going to do those without any resources. If I got them wrong, then I'm going to go back and understand why. But self-testing is something we need to include in every form of studying. You can do it at the end of a study session. Like if, you've studied for, if you're going to study for an hour, then you can do like 15 minutes of studying for understanding and the last 10, find two problems, two questions that might let you know whether or not you actually learn all that material. So again, it's Figuring out if you actually know the material is checking for accuracy and completeness. So making sure if you're doing a problem and you're missing a formula, you don't know the formula, you have to learn it. And then it's also trying to teach someone. So a lot of you are here, in, a lot of you here are in biomed, so some of you might be taking classes together. You can form study groups and then trying to teach it to someone because if you can teach it to someone and they ask you questions, then that means that you're understanding the whole thing and then you can do it without any other resources. And then to do all this, what's important is breaking down your assignments, understanding I have to study this different ways, I also have to include self-testing, so how am I going to break it down so that when I'm going to study for a test or when I'm studying for a class, I am making sure I'm doing all these things. So if, as I told you, one example, one thing that I really like to use is I'm going to study for one hour. The first, the first 45 minutes, I'm just going to check for understanding, read the textbook, and the last 15, I'm going to check to see if I learned something. That could be something, and then I'll break it down into I'm going to study for 45 minutes, chapter four, for my anatomy class. After, um, but maybe in 45 minutes, I won't be able to cover probably most of the chapter, so I'll have to do three sets of those, two sets of those. It all depends on the chapter and all those things. So when you're actually sitting down to figure out how you're going to study is figuring out and writing down what am I going to do specifically. If you're going to study for a math class, maybe you're not going to rely as much in reading the textbooks as you're going to do for doing practice problems. But it's also saying how many practice problems am I going to do? Because who here loves sitting down and saying, I'm going to study for seven hours straight? No one. Like, that sounds horrible. That sounds like a day I don't want to wake up for. So what you have to do is narrow it down to, I'm going to study for this chapter, and these are the problems that I'm going to do. And then I'm going to switch maybe to biology, and I'm going to study about the cells, and I'm going to figure out how mitosis work. That's the only thing I learned from bio, by the way. But <laughs> you have to narrow it down so that when you go and sit down to study, it's not this infinite task that you really don't want to take into account. So uh, I think we can do this. You have about two minutes, but think about the, maybe the next exam you have coming up. It can be from the class you talked about, any exams that you're maybe worried about, and write the things you're going to do for that, ta for that test. So it might be you like using flashcards. Uh, someone said Quizlets. I don't remember. It was back there. If you said you like to do Quizlets, then write those tasks down in the back of your paper as things you're going to do for the test. It doesn't have to be everything, but I just want you to get an idea of what that would look like for you to do um, when you have a test coming up. I'm, I'm going to move along because some of you have classes at two, um, so we are able to leave on time. But again, you can do this when you get home, when whatever you have to do afterwards, you, you can just sit down and do this. 
And what I encourage you to do afterwards is actually sit down and put it in your schedule. So as you said, studying, you blocked out those parts of, I'm going to study at this point. Write down exactly what you're going to do. Maybe this week, we're at Tuesday. So you still can plan for the rest of Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or maybe even next week. And then once you start doing that for all your classes, you would have a good idea of what your week is going to look like. Um, and again, I'll keep talking, and you can do this afterwards so that, um, for the sake of time. But that is all about figuring out your schedule, making sure you're prepared for the test. That sounds amazing. Like If you do that, you will already be less anxious than you would have been if you hadn't studied. However, there's still some level of anxiety, which is something that's normal, but we also want to learn how to deal with it. So if you're still prepared, but you still feel anxious, and again, all this, you don't have to write it. It's all uh, on that um, handout that I gave you, all the strategies that you can use. But it's first to think positively. And you're like, great, that sounds amazing, but when I'm freaking out, that doesn't work. Think of a mantra, something, that quote that you feel like helps you. Maybe you already have it. Maybe that's your a phone wallpaper. Maybe you have it up in your room. Or maybe you have to find one. Pinterest is amazing. Find a quote that you can tell yourself every time you're feeling anxious. Tell, and I think this is for me the best thing. Tell yourself that you're doing the very best you can do, and that is all you can do. When you are taking a test, you already took all the steps you had to take to get there. At this point, what you can give is just your best and hope that that's enough. But if you have studied, then that would probably be enough. Um, before the test, you can listen to relaxing music. Please don't try to listen to something that's just going to put you more on edge. If you already know that song that reminds you of someone, don't play that. If it's a bad memory, because that's not a good idea before coming into the test. And also post motivational quotes if that, if that helps you, as phone background or inside your notebook. And then, of course, be prepared. Arrive to class early. Make sure you have all your materials. And um, we'll jump that. But for when you're actually taking the exam, always go with your first instinct. If you're starting to, sell, to double, what's the word I'm looking for? Doubt. To doubt yourself, yes. Uh, to second guess yourself. Uh, just go for the first thing you did, and then you'll come back to it. You, you should clarify with time. Answer questions worth most amount of points first, because then you can start doing that thing where you calculate, well, if I have 20 points already here because I know this one is right, then you're not going to fail the test. You probably already have a good amount if you studied all you had to study. You already have a good set amount of points that you have already taken. It's not like you're going to get a zero, hopefully. And then if you start to freak out, Remember, this is not, the test is not the difference between life or death. Uh, there are worse things that could happen. A test is a test. It might not be the best test you take. It might be an amazing test after you are able to go through your anxiety, but it won't matter in terms of life or death. Skip the hard ones. Come back to those later once you feel more accomplished through solving those easier um, questions. Keep focused. That sounds amazing, but sometimes you can't. So just take deep breaths to relax. If you feel like you're freaking out, take a moment, breathe, and then come back to the questions. Uh, take your time. If you do the, more, the easier questions first and then you go back to the more difficult ones, you would see that your time is actually there and that you can actually manage it and then you actually have time to sit down and work through those difficult problems. And this is something that if you're self-testing, you also want to make sure you're doing your problems within the time allotted in the test. So if it's taking you an hour to do a problem that you're going to have to do five of in the test, there is an issue there. And you can solve it if you're practicing beforehand. If test anxiety persists in spite of your efforts to control it, make an appointment at CAPS to meet with a counselor if you're having that um, short breath, or if your heart rate uh, goes up, or anything that you're like, this is a concern. Meet with a counselor at CAPS. They will be able to provide even more resources to help you out if none of what we have talked about works. And then if you're struggling to stick with it, develop a UCF support team. We have a lot of things that, we, that can help you out. You might need to go to student accessibility services. Maybe you need help with other things. So you might go to night pantry, like if you're struggling. Because sometimes you're anxious about tests, but because you're also anxious about other things. So if you can also 
take all those other things into account and make sure that you're solving those as you go, then you will be more likely to sit and focus during your tests. Now that you know how to manage test anxiety, charge on and please, please fill out the evaluation that is on your tables and then leave them here. You can take all your handouts with you and I am so thankful for you all being here and for being such wonderful listeners. Yay.